So tonight's program, um, the, the little talk is going to be about Lexio Divina, and we're going to do a slightly more complex and traditional Lexio Divina than we usually do. Um, but I'll give you plenty of instruction for that. And then for our Lexio Divina tonight, we're going to listen to a recording of Martin Luther King making a short speech. It's only about one minute long, so we'll listen to that instead of me reading from a text. So that's our program and um, keep yourself muted except during the intercessory prayer and the um, when we share during the Lexio Divina, you're invited to unmute yourself um, for those. So let's begin with a psalm. Oh God, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. It was you who formed my inward parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you, for I am wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, that I know well. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Test me, and know my thoughts. Reach down into the depths of my heart to lead me in the way everlasting. Welcome to this digital contemplative prayer group. This is a place for all God's people Whatever your beliefs or doubts, you are welcome here. If you're new to Centering Prayer, just follow the instructions as the session unfolds. You're also welcome to use the silence in any other way that is right for you. Loving God, we ask for your blessings upon this gathering. Recognizing that we bring the joys and sorrows of our lives here. If anyone would like to mention silently, or aloud, prayers of gratitude, or concern for loved ones, the dead or dying, the vulnerable and suffering, or anyone who is facing a special challenge, please do so now. Christina Harris. Jimmy and Pam, Harry and Vera. With gratitude for this gathering. For Ben and Hannah. I usually give the little talk before the centering prayer, but I think tonight, because the talk is about the Lexio Divina, I'll give it right before the Lexio Divina so that it will be easier to remember. So let's go right into our period of centering prayer. 
Sit with your back straight and your feet flat on the ground or in another stable position. Your hands on your thighs or in your lap. And gently close your eyes and take a few moments to just notice if there are any adjustments you'd like to make to be comfortable for the prayer period. Are you stable, comfortable, and alert? Is there any tension that you're holding in your body that you could let go of before we begin? You could just give yourself a little scan and just notice the parts of your body where you usually hold tension and just give them a little wiggle and a shake or breathe deeply into them. Just notice how you are, your mood, if there are any emotions you could let go of or gently touch with your attention, just acknowledging them before we begin, allowing yourself to settle. And take a moment to notice who God is for you right now, whatever that might mean and renew your commitment to be open and present to the divine. Silently begin to repeat your sacred word or touch your breath gently with your attention. Using your sacred symbol to orient yourself towards God's presence. During the prayer period, whenever you notice that you've become engaged with your thoughts, Gently disengage yourself, returning to your sacred symbol if necessary. Loving God, may we rest in your presence.
You've been letting go of thoughts. Now just let go of everything and just be, just rest in God. And just notice what that feels like. Does it feel different than the centering prayer time? Is there something that you were doing during the centering prayer time that you could let go of to allow yourself to rest more completely in the prayer? It's the slight movement of letting go of thoughts, of disengaging yourself from the thoughts can be just the tiniest, gentlest movement with almost no effort. So if you notice that this time of just resting is much more effortless than your usual centering prayer time, there's maybe something you can learn from that and bring into your centering prayer next time, that feeling of resting effortlessly. So usually we do what I call simple Lexio Divina, which is a kind of a streamlined version of Lexio Divina, which is what I personally prefer. Um, but there's also a more traditional way of doing Lexio Divina with four movements. The four movements don't need to take place in any particular order and you don't need to do each step. You can move back and forth between the four movements in a, in a very intuitive way. But tonight we're just going to practice it. Um, I'm, going to, um, I'm going to play the reading, which is a recording of Martin Luther King giving a short one minute talk. And I'm going to give you an instruction for each listening just a, a suggestion for how, how to listen that time. And if you find that helpful, pay attention to it. And if you don't find it helpful, just ignore it. And just the main thing is to notice what's arising in you. Be open to your own inner movement and listen to the passage with the ear of the heart as we usually do without becoming distracted by more intellectual ways of thinking about the pack passage. Just listen to what the reading is saying to you right now. And during each reading, you can, if you choose, listen with a slightly different focus. So I'll, I'll read those, those four different suggestions to you now, and then I'll read them again in between the, the two different, the four different listenings to the recording. For the first listening, listen with the ear of the heart. Notice if any phrase, sentence, or word stands out. And if you like, you can gently begin to repeat it silently to yourself, allowing it to touch you deeply. The second listening, reflect while you listen to the passage again with deep receptivity. Notice what thoughts, feelings, and reflections arise within you. Let the words resound in your heart. What might God be asking of you through the passage? For the third listening, respond spontaneously as you listen. Now all of this will be wordlessly in terms of the actual verbal response. We'll do what we usually do, which is only respond for the fourth um, listening. I'll, I'll make that clearer as we go through it. 
but respond inwardly, spontaneously as you listen and notice any prayerful response that arises within you. For example, a small prayer of gratitude or praise. And for the fourth listening, rest in God's presence beyond thoughts or reflections. Just be. So just to summarize that very briefly, the first time we listen with the ear of the heart. The second time we reflect a little bit more. The third time we respond prayerfully. Notice if a response is arising within us. And the fourth time we rest very much the same way that we do in centering prayer. But as I said before, this is a very intuitive process. So just let your heart lead you where it will. Those are just suggestions. And if you want to ignore my suggestions, ignore my voice, even ignore if you want to ignore Martin Luther King's voice and just listen to your own heart and inward movement, there are no rules for this, only guidelines. So for the first reading, listen with the ear of the heart. Notice if any phrase, sentence, or word stands out and gently begin to repeat it silently to yourself, allowing it to touch you deeply. Okay, I'm gonna play the recording now. We all know about violence, certainly we know about it in Western civilization and all over the world. But I still contend that violence and their struggle will create many more social problems than it will solve. And that is something about nonviolence that disarms the opponent. It exposes his moral defenses, it weakens his morale, and at the same time it works on his conscience. If he doesn't beat you, wonderful. If he beats you, you develop the quiet courage of accepting blows without retaliating. If he doesn't put you in jail, wonderful. Nobody with any sense loves to go to jail. But if he puts you in jail, you go in that jail and transform it from a dungeon of shame to a haven of freedom and human dignity. Even if he tries to kill you, you develop the inner conviction that that is something so dear, something so precious, something so eternally true, that they are worth dying for. And if a man has not discovered something that he will die for, he isn't fit to live. The second time you listen, reflect again with deep receptivity. Notice what thoughts, feelings, and reflections arise within you. 
let the words resound in your heart. What might God be asking you in this reading? We all know about violence, certainly we know about it in Western civilization and all over the world. But I still contend that violence and this struggle will create many more social problems than it will solve. That is something about nonviolence that disarms the opponent. It exposes his moral defenses, it weakens his morale, and at the same time it works on his conscience. If he doesn't beat you, wonderful. If he beats you, you develop the quiet courage of accepting blows without retaliating. If he doesn't put you in jail, wonderful. Nobody with any sense loves to go to jail. But if he puts you in jail, you go in that jail and transform it from a dungeon of shame to a haven of freedom and human dignity. Even if he tries to kill you, you develop the inner conviction that there are some things so dear, some things so precious, some things so eternally true, that they are worth dying for. And if a man has not discovered something that he will die for, he isn't fit to live. The third time you listen, respond spontaneously, inwardly. Notice any prayerful response that is arising within you. For example, a small prayer of gratitude or praise. We all know about violence, certainly we know about it in Western civilization and all over the world. But I still contend that violence and this struggle will create many more social problems than it will solve. And that is something about nonviolence that disarms the opponent. It exposes his moral defenses, it weakens his morale, and at the same time it works on his conscience. If he doesn't beat you, wonderful. If he beats you, you develop the quiet courage of accepting blows without retaliating. If he doesn't put you in jail, wonderful. Nobody with any sense loves to go to jail. But if he puts you in jail, you go in that jail and transform it from a dungeon of shame to a haven of freedom and human dignity. Even if he tries to kill you, you develop the inner conviction that there are some things so dear, some things so precious, some things so eternally true, that they are worth dying for. And if a man has not discovered something that he will die for, he isn't fit to live.
The fourth time you listen, rest in God's presence beyond thoughts or reflections. Just be. We all know about violence, certainly we know about it in Western civilization and all over the world. But I still contend that violence in this struggle will create many more social problems than it will solve. And that is something about nonviolence that disarms the opponent. It exposes his moral defenses, it weakens his morale, and at the same time it works on his conscience. If he doesn't beat you, wonderful. If he beats you, you develop the quiet courage of accepting blows without retaliating. If he doesn't put you in jail, wonderful. Nobody with any sense loves to go to jail. But if he puts you in jail, you go in that jail and transform it from a dungeon of shame to a haven of freedom and human dignity. Even if he tries to kill you, you develop the inner conviction that that is something so dear, something so precious, something so eternally true, that they are worth dying for. And if a man has not discovered something that he will die for, he isn't fit to live. I invite you to share a word or phrase that resonated for you. A haven of freedom and human dignity. Quiet courage. Human dignity. Conscience. Transform. So eternally true that they are worth dying for. Transform. Inner conviction. Worth dying for. Inner conviction. Transform. You find a cause to die for, you're not fit to live. Quiet courage. Transformation. Quiet. Can you see that? 
Let's all say it together tonight. Yeah, unmuted. Ground of all being. All being. Mother of life. Mother of, life. Mother of, life. Mother of the universe. Your name is your sacred. Name is sacred. Beyond, beyond speaking. speaking. May we know your presence. Oh, your presence. May your longings, May your longings be our longings in heart, heart, and in action. And action. May there be food for the human family May, today. May there be food for the human, for the human family, family today. today. For the whole Forgive us the faults we have done. done. Forgive, Forgive us the faults of what we have done. As we do not forsake our true to us. But lead so us, God forsake us, us in our, in our time, time of conflict, conflict. the light of life, lead, lead us into the beginning, of life. beginning, the glory of life, for the light, the light of life, of life. The, the vitality of life, of life. And, the, and, and the glory of life, of life. for us are yours now, now and forever. And forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you for being here. If you feel like staying afterwards and commenting on tonight's experience, it was a little different than usual. So I'm happy to do that.